In the last video we talked about the basics of hand stitching. Now I'm going to start showing you the different types of stitches. We're going to start with the most common stitch. It's called the back stitch. Once again I'm going to start from the very beginning where I made my marks. I'm going to push the needle through to where the first eighth of an inch dot that I made is. Pull through until I hit the knot. Don't pull too hard. You don't want it tight. You don't want to bring your fabric in. You want to be snug but not loose and not tight. I'm going to start over again looping back at the very beginning and make another stitch over where I just went. Once again this is called making a tack. Next I'm going to go ahead and start making my stitches. Once again starting from the beginning I'm going to start here and continue on. However this time I'm going to go forward a complete one-fourth of an inch to the next dot. As you'll notice on the top the first eighth of an inch now has a piece of thread covering it and on the back side I've gone forward a fourth of an inch. Repeat the process. Start back at an eighth of an inch and move forward one fourth of an inch. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Pull your thread out until the doubled end of the thread is loose. If your thread gathers like what just happened here, you need to make sure that you fix that before you continue. You don't want to tighten it. As you'll notice, the thread is wrapping around itself, which means it's starting to twine. This means that we most likely have to add more wax to the thread. For the demonstration though, I'm going to continue on and just make sure that it doesn't ravel up on me. Back an eighth of an inch, forward a quarter inch. In other words, one step back, two steps forward. Back and to the left. One step back, two steps forward. Back and to the left. As the loose end of your thread gets close to where you're making the stitches, go ahead and pull it forward a little bit. You don't want it too close. If you'll notice, the stitches that I'm making are not pulling the thread into a circle as I go. This means that my tension is pretty even. The more tension you add by pulling on the thread after you've made the stitch, the more it's going to curl your fabric. You don't want this to happen. So I'm hoping that you can see the reason why they call this a back stitch. Because each time I make a stitch, I'm going back an eighth of an inch. Back and to the left. What this does is create a successive chain of loops. Each loop locks the fabric and the thread together so that way it won't move or shift. Now I've been making these stitches at a very slow pace the way you can see what this looks like. You normally want to try to be a little bit quicker than this and as you successfully make your stitches you will find yourself doing so without even thinking about it. Now let's say this is the end of your row of stitches. I'm going to loop back and end up where I just ended up at. In other words, I'm making another tack. And then after that, I'll go ahead and make a tiny stitch and then pull my stitch through the loop and tie it off. So let's check what our stitch has done on the outside. You can see the row of stitches peeking out through the fabric for two reasons. Number one is because this is a very loose linen and the other reason is because we're using a contrasting thread to our fabric for the demonstration purpose. You would normally be using a thread that's very similar to the color of your fabric. Using my small sleeve pressing board I'm going to go ahead and press the seam open. Let's say that this is my seam allowance. Normally there would only be about a fourth of an inch at the end of the fabric. To make it clear what's happening, I've put two blue X's 
indicating that this is the underside of the fabric or the part of the fabric that would be facing you if this were a real garment. I'm going to take the seam allowances and open them. Then I'm going to take the iron and without pressing down, I'm just pushing forward to make sure that the seam allowance is open underneath the iron. I'm then going to press down and release it with some steam. Pull back and look at the stitch. Now that we've opened up the seam, I'm going to pull on this fabric really hard. I'm using all of my strength. As I pull, you can see that the different tensions are pulling the fabric in different ways, creating ripples. And some of the seams are opening up more than others. This means that the ones up here on the top are probably a little bit too loose. The ones here in the middle seem to be the strongest. The strongest and most snug. So that's how to make a back stitch. Once again, this is a finishing stitch that's going to last on the garment for years if you do it correctly, and it's also going to add to the shape, the comfort, and the elegant style of a, of a tailored garment.